Could you have a doppelganger somewhere out there? Considering that there are over 7 billion people in the world and a limited number of genes that make up facial features, there is a pretty good chance. Perhaps the most bizarre example of this phenomenon is the case of two men both named Brady Fagel, who had far more in common than just their name. As the list of mind-boggling similarities continued to grow, the pair decided that it was time to explore the true extent of their connection long before the two Brady Fields would experience their life-changing encounter. It seemed as if both of their lives had become intertwined by fate. After all, both of them pursued a career in minor league baseball. Clearly, they were on a crash course with destiny. It wasn't until 2019 that the two ballplayers found out about each other. While one of the Brady's, a two eight-year-old left-handed relief pitcher, played in the Texas Rangers system, the other two three-year-old Brady found himself in the Oakland athletic system as a right-handed starting pitcher. But their shared profession was the least of their spooky similarities. It was nearly impossible to tell the two ballplayers apart just by their physical appearances. To start off, both men had the same ginger hair, neatly trimmed red beards, and thick athletic sunglasses. But it wasn't just their fashion sense that bamboozled onlookers. According to both Brady's, Neither one of them had previously met another person with a fetal surname who wasn't a relative. Years before the similarities between the two men surfaced, however, the Brady in the Texas Rangers system revealed that he had done some digging into his family history. Perhaps this research could shed light on why the Bradys were so interconnected. Years earlier, the Brady from the Texas Rangers decided to visit Ellis Island in an effort to uncover his roots. During his trip, he discovered that his ancestors had arrived in America from Germany. Perhaps the two Bradys shared some common lineage. That question would have to wait, as the pair focused on a more specific and unfortunate bond between them. Because they were both pitchers, the two Bradys had experienced a great amount of elbow strain. As a result, they both required the exact same surgery in order to overcome their injuries. In a most chilling coincidence, the two Bradys underwent Tommy John surgery around the same time. What's more, they learned that their surgeries were performed by the exact same doctor in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So how would the Bradys react to this news? As word of the men's similarities continued to circulate, it became increasingly clear that they needed to speak with one another in order to fully make sense of their parallel lives. Ultimately, one of their girlfriends encouraged a meeting between the pair as she had been eager to get a glimpse of her man's doppelganger. Soon enough, she would get her wish. Inside Edition arranged a meeting between the baseball pitchers and Cedar Rapids. As the two Bradys discussed their nearly identical lives, it was natural for them to wonder if they were possibly being long-lost cousins or even siblings. In order to determine the truth behind the question on everyone's mind, the men undertook a DNA test. After each set a vial of saliva off to a testing facility, the Bradys eagerly awaited the results that would unlock their ancestral roots. Soon enough, the DNA results were ready. As the two men peered down at the tablets in their hands, they couldn't believe the results that awaited them on the screens. For starters, the data in front of them proved that the research that the one Brady had done about his German family roots was correct. Would the others share this background? As the second Brady announced that he himself was 53% German, the one who had visited Ellis Island stopped right in his tracks. The pair had the exact same percentage of German ancestry. Suddenly, the two men laughed in bewilderment at this unbelievable link. Would the rest of the results follow suit? In spite of their Germanic roots, there ultimately was no shared DNA detected between the baseball players, meaning that they were not, in fact, related at all. It seemed that the immense similarities between the men were nothing more than a coincidence. But this revelation didn't stop the media frenzy. Even after it was confirmed that the men were not long-lost family members, people still clamored to see the DNA tests for themselves. While they may not be relatives, the two Bradys undoubtedly formed a strong connection thanks to their meetings. We're still brothers in a way, the Texas Rangers player confirmed. Previously part of the Oakland Athletics, the younger Brady signed a minor league contract with Las Vegas Aviators and remained with his girlfriend, according to his social media posts. The older Brady, after becoming a free agent, had the honor of getting married to his sweetheart, 
at the start of 2020. While his doppelganger didn't seem to be in attendance, the meeting of the two Bradys was surely a memory that both will cherish for years to come. They're lucky, as not every rookie story ends so neatly. See, over a decade ago, a young man named Danny Almont who was growing desperate. The two one-year-old pitcher sat in silence. Each round of the MLB draft was slowly slipping past, and his telephone wasn't ringing. His mind raced. What could have happened? Where had he gone wrong? Well, Danny knew exactly when he had gone wrong. August 2001. That was when one impossible secret robbed him of his promising future. In those days, Danny was known by a different name, Little Unit. This was a hat tip to the awe-inspiring Hall of Fame pitcher Randy Big Unit Johnson. The moniker made sense. Danny's repertoire featured the kind of stuff you only saw in the pros. That included a slick slider and a 76 miles per hour fastball. Considering the little league pitching distance of 46 feet, that's like an adult throwing a 10-2 miles per hour major league pitch. So if Danny didn't mess up, he was clearly destined for greatness. Pitch after pitch, strikeout after strikeout, the Dominican-born Bronx native had quickly become the next great Little League phenom. Backed by his team, nicknamed the Baby Bombers, because of how close they played to Yankee Stadium, Danny dominated the circuit en route to a Little League World Series, LLWS birth. Danny was hardly phased by the big stage, though. In front of a packed crowd, he pulled off the first perfect game in the LLWS in two, two years, and the team's next matchup against a squad from Oceanside, California, seemed as if it would be just as one-sided, but a 4-10, 8-2-pound 11-year-old begged to differ. The boy's name was Matthew Serta, and what he lacked in size he made up for in good old-fashioned baseball IQ. Baseball analysts touted him as one of the best young prospects in decades. Several major league clubs even began recruiting him. He also became a hometown hero of sorts. Alongside his team, Danny enjoyed free trips to see the Yankees and got the key to the city from Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Danny no doubt relished in his newfound fame, but it wasn't to last, and he never could have anticipated that the spotlight would uncover the one thing his father had kept hidden for a year. The truth. During Danny's Little League World Series run, many people had been suspicious about Danny's presence, and after the tournament ended, two rival teams even hired private investigators to find out the truth about Danny's past. But it wasn't until two Sports Illustrated reporters traveled to the pitcher's Dominican birthplace that Danny's secret was revealed. Danny's birth certificate had listed 1,989 as his birth year, but he actually been born in 87, making him 14 at the time of the LLWS. That meant that he was two years too old to have played in the competition. The scandal shook the baseball world to its core. But it was Danny, who was completely innocent and unaware of any wrongdoing, who paid the steepest price. His father was sent back to the Dominican Republic and banned from Little League. Danny then seemingly fell out of love with baseball. To those watching, Danny no longer had the resolve or motivation to play. His pitching skills were not as sharp as before, and his personal life fell under scrutiny too. The 2006 draft didn't help matters. Once a sure thing draft choice, Danny was passed over in the 2006 MLB draft. He ultimately signed to play for the Southern Illinois Miners of the Independent Frontier League in 2007. He posted a 5-2-9 era in six games before being released. His professional career lasted just 34 days, but he didn't give up. Danny managed to bounce back in a big way after joining the Western Oklahoma State Junior College team, giving up his slider to perfect his other pitches. Behind his arm and a red-hot bat, Danny led his team to the Juco World Series. His big league dreams were still within reach. The Kansas City Royals even expressed interest in taking him in the 2008 MLB draft. Yet on that fateful June day, the phone never rang for two one-year-old Danny Almont. The same, however, couldn't be said for that other Little League star from 2001. Following his faithful LLWS appearance, young Matthew Serta trained rigorously to prove he was more than just another Danny Almont strikeout. Growing to 5'9", 165 pounds, 
the Yelnian fielder smashed Oceanside records to become one of the nation's most promising prospects, and not long after, a professional ball player. While Danny Sfum sat silent, Matthew received a call from the Chicago Cubs, who drafted him in the fourth round as a catcher. For five years, Matthew tore up the minor leagues. But after missing a season due to injury and working through several position changes, the two three-year-old decided to hang up his cleats for good. Danny ultimately served as an assistant baseball coach at his old high school. Believe it or not, the former prodigy even said he's glad his secret got out. And while he didn't make it as far as in athletics as he initially planned, he probably knew that his reputation could have suffered much worse.